Hi, everybody. I'm Al Bernstein, and I'm going to share with you now one of the best boxing matches in the 1990s. On July 15th, 1995, Chiquita Gonzalez, flyweight champion and icon in the sport, was 29 years old and already 15 years into a professional career in which he had won three world championships in two weight divisions. He was an extraordinary fighter, and he would on this night defend his title against Saman Sarjatarong, a fighter from Thailand who, while very good, had lost his only title match before that to Ricardo Lopez, who, of course, was an icon in the sport as well. But very few people thought that Sarjatarong had any chance of dethroning Chiquita Gonzalez. What they produced on that night was rated as the fight of the year by Ring Magazine. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to Acción Caliente and our main event of the evening brought to you by Forum Boxing Incorporated and Budweiser, the undisputed king of beers. This bout coming your way is sanctioned by and conducted under the rules of the World Boxing Council, the President Jose Suleiman, Supervisor Jose Mayorga, the IBF President is Robert Lee Sr., along with the California State Athletic Commission, the chairman is William Eastman, the vice chairman, Willie Buchanan, commissioners at ringside, Andrew Kim, former world champion, Carlos Palomino, Cal Soto, and Kim Welshans, with our executive director, Richard DeCure. Physicians at ringside, the father-son fight doctor team of Dr. Robert and Dr. Adam Carnes, along with Dr. Paul Wallace. Timekeepers at the bell, also keeping count of the knockdowns, Debbie Garcia and John Lichty, presenting to you our judges, scoring this bout from ringside. Henry Elespuru, Pat Russell, and Vince Delgado, with a referee in charge, and he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Lou Filippo. All right, fans, here we go. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, it's time for the main event of the evening, the WBC and IBF Light Flyweight Championship of the World scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. I present to you first the challenger on my left fighting out of the red corner. He enters the ring wearing white trunks with red trim and joining us all the way from the Kampangsian province in Thailand. He weighed in at 107 and one half pounds. His outstanding record includes 25 wins, two losses, one draw with 20 big wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the WBC number five ranked light flyweight contender in the world introducing Saman Sojakturo. And his opponent across the ring is the defending world champion on my right, fighting out of the blue corner. He is wearing yellow trunks with black trim, fighting out of and representing his hometown, where he gained the nickname of El Pequeño Gigante de Ciudad Mesa, Mexico. His weight, the same as his opponent at 107 and one half pounds. His record, 42 wins, two losses, 29 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the defending WBC and IBF light flyweight champion of the world, El Carnicerito Humberto Chiquita Gonzalez. in charge, Lou Filippo, now to give instructions. Okay, you had your instructions, give me a good fight. Good luck to both of you. Fernando, there's more Mexican flags here than in Mexico City. They were waving from everywhere. Especially now where uh, a lot of the people down there in the government are even hiding.
para meterte al shock, que te vaya a chocar con una derecha o cuando te retiras con un gancho vivo. Cada vez que lo vas a buscar vivo, cuando te venga de ahí, para que te puedas quitar y contragolpear.
Some solid shots. 
and uh, appeared to be weakening with each round as I blown up twice at size and not the same before the round. Well, the second was down in the sixth about the green. So it was an first time we tried. How do you feel? Oh, he's here. No, tomorrow. We go tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 58 seconds in round number seven. The referee in charge, Lou Filippo, stops the contest. The winner by way of knockout, he is the new WBC and IBF light flyweight champion of the world, Saman Sojatulam. Chiquita, just like the uh, Carvajal fight, you seem to be ahead. Uh, igual que la pelea de contra Carvajal, parecía que ibas al frente. Pues sí, pero pues se me agarró y no tengo por qué me gustaría perder estos. Ni modo, así es, ahora iré por la revancha. He says that that's the way it is. Just, he says that there's no excuses. He was cut and he will go for the rematch. Did, was, did you develop the fight plan that you wanted to at the beginning? ¿Desarrollaste el plan de pelea como tú lo querías al principio? Sí, de menos a más, pero pues me agarró. Creo que no hay muchas perder estos. Siento yo que me agarró y iba a ir para atrás en lugar de más sereno, pero me precipité, pero ni modo. He says that yes, he was starting to work on his plans, so going from less to more. In other words, keep on pressuring. He says that he might have pressured himself a little bit, but uh, that's that what that's, he had to go. Uh, that's the way it went. Now, uh, you, you, you seem that you had it under control. Parecía que lo tenías bajo control. Sí, pero me, me adelanté a quererlo rápido, más que lo que hice. Puede meterme al choque y me agarró y ni modo. No tengo que buscar textos. Me agarró y buscaremos otra vez otra pelea. He said that yes, uh, that uh, this, this uh, has no excuses. He didn't do uh, really his fight, although he, uh, went little, he pressured himself a little bit more. But there's no excuses. He will go for the rematch. There was a lot of talk about uh, you might not be wanting to fight for uh, too long. Is that the case now? Desde de cientos que parecía que ya no querías pelear mucho. ¿Te motiva esto para más? Claro que ahora voy a, a buscarlo. Pero vamos a ver qué vamos a hacer. Vamos a pensarlo bien. Claro que ya logré lo que quería y ni modo, así es esto. Ok, he says that, uh, yes, it motivates him a little bit more. So, good luck, felicidades del futuro. Gracias. Ok, we're going to take a look now at the new champ. If you, you can get him around here. We're going to be needing a translator. Come over here. You're going to be translating? Okay. Okay, he's going to be translating for us. This is his manager. He seemed to be losing the fight when he came back. Yeah. He said uh, when we came, because before we come back, uh, all the Chinese people, he thought they did not win. But we know, our group know, we can win. No one, no one believe in him. No one believe him to win. But our group, we know, we, we must win. Can you tell him how hurt was he when he was getting hit underneath when he went down? Was he really hurt? <laughs> okay, let's bring it to you. Come here. Let us know if you can also interpret. Come over here in the middle. Hey, now, can you explain it? Was he here when he was here? Uh, it was a combination of the crowd and the body punch, and uh, he was he was partly hurt. He, it was a, it was a genuine count, you know. He hurt into the body. Can you ask him if he was uh, losing visibility out of the right eye? This, this, this man yes, sir. Go on. Okay, yeah, well, we're gonna have a United Nations meeting here. Was he losing visibility when he was uh, during the fight? Uh, uh, what's that again? I'm sorry. Was he losing visibility? Uh, he had a, 
Hi everybody, Al Bernstein here with another one of our great fights from the Forum Boxing Library. In this show, we will take a look at maybe the first major fight that Juan Manuel Marquez had. As a 22-year-old in November of 1995, he took on Julian Wheeler, who was a terrific amateur champion and, like Marquez, was 13-1 at the time of this fight. It was thought of to be a terrific matchup between the two of them, and whoever won the experts thought would move on to challenge for a world title soon thereafter. It was a match in which Wheeler had a big height and reach advantage over Marquez and used it effectively in this fight. But it would turn out to be a terrific matchup. And it would have a little bit of a controversy attached to it as well. Let's take a look at this excellent matchup. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the home of championship boxing as we once again have a big night of action coming away. And it's all brought to you by Forum Boxing Incorporated, along with Budweiser, the undisputed king of beers. At this time, we present the officials appointed by the California State Athletic Commission. Our physicians at ringside, Dr. Robert Carnes and Dr. Perlman Hicks. Timekeepers at the bell also keeping count of the knockdowns. We have Aaron Coslow and John Lichty. And introducing to you our referee in charge of this bout, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Larry Rosadilla. All right, fans, here we go. This bout coming away is one of our featured attractions, scheduled for 10 rounds of boxing as we feature two fine young featherweights in the ring. Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner, he is wearing blue trunks with gold trim and joining us from Virginia Beach, Virginia. He weighed in at 126 and three quarter pounds. Here is the 1992 U.S. Olympian whose professional record stands at 12 wins, only one defeat with five wins. Coming by way of knockout, introducing Julian, the dealer Wheeler. And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, this 10-round attraction. He is wearing black trunks with red trim, fighting out of Mexico City, Distrito Federal, Mexico. He weighed in at 127 pounds, and his fine record stands at 12 wins, only one defeat, with nine wins coming by way of knockout, introducing Juan Manuel Marquez. Once again, here's our referee in charge, Larry Rosadilla. Okay. This is a little high, so it's a tam muy arriba. It's a little this is fine, okay. Give me a good clean fight. You limp up a winner suerte. Good luck. All right, tail of the tape for these two talented featherweights. Marquez is 5'7. The uh, dealer, the wheeler, is 5'8 and a half. 126 and three quarters. Marquez at 127. Wheeler is a year older, and he has an advantage of three inches in the reach department. 71 to 68, scheduled for 10, and out they come. Marquez is decidedly shorter, and in fact, listed at 5'7". I would think Wheeler would be closer to 5'10 from the look of him as they stand out there in the center of the ring. Marquez can punch. He's won 12 in a row. The only fight he lost was his pro debut. He hasn't had to go past eight rounds but once. He likes to get things over in a hurry. And as Rich Morata told you, the guy he's in against, lean and lanky, 
Julian Wheeler is a magnificent boxer who will be funneled you, dance all the way around, and jab you silly if given the chance. But he's got a pretty good punch, too, I guess. Richie's got five knockouts. Well, it's, it's not a great punch, Tom. His, uh, his punching power, I guess, emanates from, uh, you know, just being able to land a lot of punches throughout the course of a fight. He will, one thing I'm noticing here in the early going is in a fight that I did with him uh, a few months ago against Gabriel Castro, he uh, he really was dancing in that fight. He's come out here more flat-footed. Uh, he's sitting right fight. down all of a sudden, isn't he? Yes, he's not, he's not dancing and running in this fight, but he's so quick, Tom, and uh, his boxing ability is so fine that maybe he does, does not feel he really needs to do that. He got nailed with the right hand there. Got hit with another ago that brought a new and an off of the crowd. This one figures to be a very good fight. Marquez is considered to be a top prospect. But uh, Rich uh, was couching his observations in uh, careful terms. He came on the air and he said, uh, very live underdog in the parlance of the two-dollar mixture. <laughs> is uh, the kid, uh, the wheeler, 